A. The Being of God. It is quite evident that the Being of God does not admit of any scientific definition. In order to give a logical definition of God, we would have to begin by going in search of some higher concept, under which God could be coordinated with other concepts, and would then have to point out the characteristics that would be applicable to God only. Such a genetic synthetic definition cannot be given of God, since God is not one of several species of gods, which can be subsumed under a single genus. At most only an analytical descriptive definition is possible. This merely names the characteristics of a person or thing, but leaves the essential being unexplained. And even such a definition cannot be complete, but only partial, because it is impossible to give an exhaustive positive, as opposed to negative, description of God. It would consist in an enumeration of all the known attributes of God, and these are to a great extent negative in character. The Bible never operates with an abstract concept of God, but always describes him as the living God, who enters into various relations with his creatures, relations which are indicative of several different attributes. In Kuiper's Dictaton Dogmatiek, De Deo I, page 28, we are told that God, personified as wisdom, speaks of his essence in Proverbs 8 verse 14, when he ascribes to himself to Shiach, a Hebrew word rendered, wesen, in the Holland translation. But this rendering is very doubtful, and the English rendering, counsel, deserves preference. It has also been pointed out that the Bible speaks of the nature of God in 2 Peter 1 verse 4, but this can hardly refer to the essential being of God, for we are not made partakers of the divine essence. An indication of the very essence of God has been found in the name Jehovah, as interpreted by God himself, I am that I am. On the basis of this passage the essence of God was found in being itself, abstract. Being. And this has been interpreted to mean self existence or self contained permanence or absolute independence. Another passage is repeatedly quoted as containing an indication of the essence of God, and as the closest approach to a definition that is found in the Bible, namely, John 4 verse 24 God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship in spirit and truth. This statement of Christ is clearly indicative of the spirituality of God. The two ideas derived from these passages occur repeatedly in theology as designations of the very being of God. On the whole it may be said that scripture does not exalt one attribute of God at the expense of the others, but represents them as existing in perfect harmony in the divine being. It may be true that now one, and then another attribute is stressed, but scripture clearly intends to give due emphasis to every one of them. The being of God is characterized by a depth, a fullness, a variety, and a glory far beyond our comprehension, and the Bible represents it as a glorious harmonious whole, without any inherent contradictions. And this fullness of life finds expression in no other way than in the perfections of God. Some of the early church fathers were clearly under the influence of Greek philosophy in their doctrine of God and, as Seberg expresses it, did not advance beyond the mere abstract conception that the divine being is absolute attributeless existence. For some time theologians were rather generally inclined to emphasize the transcendence of God, and to assume the impossibility of any adequate knowledge or definition of the divine essence. During the Trinitarian controversy the distinction between the one essence and the three persons in the Godhead was strongly emphasized, but the essence was generally felt to be beyond human comprehension. Gregory of Nazianz, however, ventures to say, so far as we can discern, Hoon and Ho-Theos are somehow more than other terms the names of the divine essence and of these Hoon is the preferable. He regards this as a description of absolute being. Augustine's conception of the essence of God was closely akin to that of Gregory. In the Middle Ages too there was a tendency, neither to deny that man has any knowledge of the essence of God, or to reduce such knowledge to a minimum. In some cases one attribute was singled out as most expressive of the essence of God. Thus Thomas Aquinas spoke of his ACT or self-existence, and Duns Scotus, of his infinity. It became quite common also to speak of God as actus purus in view of his simplicity. The reformers and their successors also spoke of the essence of God as incomprehensible, but they did not exclude all knowledge of it, though Luther used very strong language on this point. They stressed the unity, simplicity, and spirituality of God. The words of the Belgic Confession are quite characteristic, we all believe with the heart and confess with the mouth that there is one only simple and spiritual being, which we call God.
Art. I. Later on philosophers and theologians found the essence of God in abstract being, in universal substance, in pure thought, in absolute causality, in love, in personality, and in majestic holiness or the numinous.